Hello, Pod Squad. Welcome back to the channel. So today we have a very special guest. We have Dr. Santos here with us. And uh, he's very special because there's a lot, a lot of big things that he's done for our field. And uh, there's something that he's been dreaming up since he was in podiatric medical school very early on. So it's impressive. And he's put He's put that project out into the world and he has a huge army that we're part of behind him to help him out. So without further ado, we'd uh, like Dr. Santos to talk to us a little more about it, uh, about this project. And also let's start off with, uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so thank you, Yona. Thank you, Dishka, for having me here together. It's, uh, I'm a big fan of you guys and thank you for supporting me, everything you've done so far along the way. So a little bit about myself, I am Roberto De Los Santos, Dr. Santos uh, here at Houston, Texas. I'm a, currently a third year podiatry resident. I'm about to finish in the next couple months. And uh, the idea of all this kind of started in podiatry school. I went to CSPM, California School of Podiatric Medicine in the San Francisco Bay Area. And if you visit the Bay Area, you realize that there's a lot of technology happening. A lot of the major things that we use on our daily basis, Google, YouTube, uh, Uber, uh, Zoom even. And I realized that people really talk about was coding. So I took it upon myself to get some free classes out in the Bay Area besides uh, being in podiatry school. And with that in mind, that kind of explored that I was able to do what what is called uh, website designs and templating. And with my background in promotions and marketing, that kind of helped create more of a visual aesthetic for the future of podiatry. So it started off with the prepodiatrylife.com. That was my first website in 2013, 2014. Um, and it kind of went up and off. And then right before I graduated, I had more ideas, which created prepodiatry study, a study website, particularly for fourth year students and then Prepodiatry Clinic 101 to help first and second year students. And then finally, Halix Magazine to have uh, the voice of the students be heard for students by students. So that's kind of how it spread. And now five or four and five years later, now we have a big army of about 50 plus students helping me throughout the country. Uh, that's, that's really awesome to hear. And obviously being part of your team and thankfully you accepting us, uh, we really enjoy being a part of this organization because uh, I know it's been growing and we just recently got into the podiatric medical field about two years ago. So you've been in it for quite some time and you've been noticing a gradual change in our podiatric community. So could you explain to us why you started it? What was I understand that you had all this knowledge that you were gaining through technology, seeing things, uh, but I want, just give us why you needed to do this. Why did the field need this? So early at the time when I was working on this, the, the templates, which you can kind of see right now, back in the day, were nothing but advertisement. So most websites were very linear, pretty straightforward, and there was about six to 10 advertisements all throughout. And I felt like that didn't capture, if anything, it distracted the student to see what exactly our field is about. Um, it's kind of like driving a NASCAR. You forget that there's a car and you see all the logos. And that I personally, I wanted to realize that there is a human side to podiatry. There is a lifestyle, there is a student. And mostly it's that, what is that student going through and what are they gonna become, which is a future surgeon in the foot and ankle. My biggest uh, idea with this was to, can I create a visual and with the magazine, can I have words into text for future students and in, in the near future to read what has happened, what has become and how can they benefit and why they should join podiatry medicine as a whole. So that's it. <laughs> That's fantastic. And really, I, I'm always motivated to do so much whenever I hear your inspiring story about how you created all of this and what you're doing now and your visions for the future. And so um, I, I did want to know if you could share with us, we love to hear it, what is, what does this all entail, all of your websites that you've put so much work into? So it entails uh, our motto of pre-podiatry life is uh, learn podiatry, practice podiatry, and live podiatry. 
So live podiatry is pre-podiatry life. You're going to be doing this for the rest of your life, hopefully, and you have to learn what you love because you're going to be doing it daily. And if you love what you do, then it, it's going to show to your patients and to the students. It's going to create inspiration and hope to get better overall. Uh, learn podiatry. Pr uh, learn podiatry is for clinic 101. Learning the basics. It's more of a visual game. You know, you can't keep your eyes closed throughout medical school. You have to keep accepting everything that's get thrown at you. But sometimes I feel it's the expression is like you're drinking water from from a fire hydrant, right? It, it comes to you so quickly. So pre podiatry clinic 101 is to take it easy, take it slow. And like me, I needed a visual. Uh, I guess, sense of anatomy, medicine, and just in general, podiatry clinic. And then finally, pre-podiatry study is for the fourth year traveling student. So as a fourth year, you're every month you're at a different internship or externship, and you kind of don't have so many resources that you don't know what exactly to study. So this is just to support those resources. resources. Essentially, once you get tired, uh, you're going to do a lot of question and answers, right? Click, boom, click, boom. And in the end, every test that you take for the rest of your life, boards one, boards two, boards three, clinical boards, surgical boards, everything is question and answer. So that pretty much trains your mind to know the exact answer and be confident. So it's all to help the student at each stage of their life in the beginning of podiatry, in the middle and towards the end. I love that. I love how you are sort of just laying down the groundwork, starting from a prospective student in mind all the way down to the fourth year podiatric medical student entering their residency. And that is a huge deal that you're doing. And I think you are the only website, I believe, that has actually set up this ability to carry us on from the beginning all the way to the end and provide so many features. And with that in mind, I know as a prospective student, I had difficulty finding resources about just about podiatry life in general. And um, the field is not as well known as it should be because based off our eyes and based off the students who are applying, uh, they say that, oh, podiatry is a big thing now. But in reality, it's still very small little gem compared to the other healthcare fields. Um, what can you say about pre-podiatry life? What features does it have that, uh, that prospective students can utilize um, and to learn better from when, they're, when they are applying to podiatric medical school and trying to learn about it? So uh, pre-podiatry life essentially started as a simple Q&A, meaning what is the most frequently asked uh, questions and answers for students? But I realized that many years that that wasn't enough. People wanted a timeline saying, how many years am I devoting my life to this, which is four years of podiatry school, three years of residency, and there's opportunity to grow as a fellowship. Um, besides that, you are automatically accepted into a surgical residency, which is not guaranteed in medical school. So that was the biggest factors. But over the years, uh, recently, I included a visual timeline. So students can actually see what can they expect. Two, I added uh, videos, which is something we've been pushing the past two years because uh, videos are the new TVs, and it's, which is the new norm. And third, I added scholarships to motivate students and to help them with their CVs and also use their words as a goal in mind to help not only themselves to win a scholarship, but to help other students also gain more insight. In other words, it's a small little circle and I'm trying to provide as much as I can. And the next future thing that I recently added was student mentors. That way you can connect directly with a student maybe in New York and Temple and Arizona, California, and see something that you can connect with. Okay, you get a little bit about the background, which uh, Yona, you're part of, you know? And essentially it's, how can I connect with that student? I feel comfortable with that connection. Now I'm gonna approach with an email so we can further discuss why I should join this profession. Okay, that is incredible. I actually didn't know that. I don't know why I never asked you about that. Uh, that's a really good idea and a great thing that you began, Dr. Santos, actually. Um, I would have loved that personally <laughs> before I joined podiatry because it does sometimes feel like you don't know what's going on and you want to learn more and that's the best way to learn more. 
if you're connecting with someone at the school already. Um, I was wondering about what about what about the students who are already in podiatry? Because I can see that I, I really like this idea that you're asking you you have all this help from students who are currently in podiatry school and podiatry medical school, and they're creating. Um, this huge, it's basically like a blog of all of these experiences that they've had. And so people that are interested in podiatry, they now have this resource so they can go look through everything and see what podiatry students go through on a daily basis. And I really like that aspect of what you're doing. Um, so what else, we, we know that you have plenty of things that you provide for podiatry medical students, but for our audience, we wanted you to share a little bit about what opportunities they'd have um, and how they can, in fact, join you and your team. So um, we always, every year we do a, an application process for the students within the night schools. And I take that ap application really serious because my goal is to give everybody a leadership position. And if it's your first year uh, joining with us, then we give it an opportunity to, to climb the ladder. There is a pyramid, there is a hierarchy where besides me as the chief and the creator of Marathi's, there's also Elizabeth Answer and Rafael Kureshi, who've been with me since day one. They helped me create this, but underneath them, there's directors for the students. There's also uh, student mentors, student leaders. There's uh, delegates, there's senior editors, regular editors, and recently added photojournalists, all in mind to provide more feedback to this. Uh, even though it's kind of difficult right now uh, because of the times that we're living in, um, nobody's really getting together. So it's making a magazine from home. is It hasn't been as great as it should in the past, but I'm still pretty connected to all the students, which is pretty impressive. I would say um, more than the average uh, podiatry organization out there. And the reason is because we touch lifestyle and we touch student life in general which uh, only a few resources are actually true, you know. Yeah, you mentioned all these different positions. Can you just uh, tell us how many available positions are there? Is it about like 70 positions? Is there 60 positions? How many are there? So I try to do at least 15 positions per school. That's the wow. maximum I try to That's do. That's a lot of positions. But that's for the first, second, third, and fourth grades. So you're looking at about three students per grade. So there's there's a, there's a lot of opportunities for these students. Yes. So the, it's it's only been growing from there, right? Yes. So our first year was 13 students. The second year, I believe, it was 34, and now we're at 53. Hopefully, next year our goal is to have 70 to 75. So there's always room to grow. I try to be very uh, lenient and try to give everybody a position, especially that they're going to grow in and so they can help me and as also help themselves kind of deal. That's great to hear. Also, you mentioned a little bit about scholarships and I, I know uh, Diksha and I were talking about scholarships, especially when we were first entering podiatric medical school. There, there aren't a lot of scholarships out there. Uh, tell us the reason why you started to want to do scholarships for uh, students and are these scholarships only available to students or are these available also to prospective students or are these only available to Halix Magazine or pre-podiatry life mentors or people with their positions? Can you just expand on that a little bit? So as of now, 2020, 2021, we have a total of five scholarships. Last year we only had two. So we definitely grew in that. The reason why I push for scholarships is because I'm a big believer in giving back. Um, if it wasn't for uh, a personal scholarship that somebody gave me, um, I probably would have never gone to podiatry school. So that hit me pretty hard, well to the heart. A simple $5,000 uh, personal scholarship that somebody gave me an undergrad allowed me to pay for my flight to interview at these podiatry schools. So because of that, I promised that I was going to help as many people as I can. So that's why I'm always about giving, giving, giving. So it's, it's honestly to give back. I don't, and it all comes from my pocket, which is not a big salary as a resident. You, you guys will figure that out. But um, even though it's not a lot of money, it will be. And 
it will be because a lot of people believe in these scholarships. So they're going to help me along with me becoming a future, well, a doctor in a couple months. So I'll be able to expand. Um, the scholarships, I have one exclusive just for current leaders within Halix Magazine and Pre-Podiatry Life. I did that so it can be more an exclusive for us to know that, hey, there's a narrow margin of winning. You should actually roll the dice and see if you can submit something, which students are really grateful of. It's less stress and more creativity. The second scholarship uh, we have so far is the Women's Month of March. So March has always been a big month for us, especially because social media and uh, women use a lot of social media. So my way to give back is, all right, let's get first and second place to uh, or two winners this year. And we're using shirts to raise money exclusively all for scholarships. So the third one that's coming up is usually a team scholarship. Uh, this is the one we've had since the beginning. It's coming up where any uh, nonprofit organization or like within the schools can apply. And then I believe the fourth one is our first ever photojournalist uh, scholarship. So this is the first one we get to do it. Um, so hopefully it's gonna be fun. I try to treat it as if it was like a National Geographic photo. Take a photo that inspires people and a picture is worth a thousand words. So it's, it's gonna be fun. And then the final, uh, the fifth one is um, it's World Free Book Day. I'm actually giving free books to any high school and undergrad student who applies to it. So that's coming up. I just want to mention one thing. You did mention that. Uh, so you do make t-shirt designs and I help you with that. And uh, I just want to give a quick shout out on this video that uh, we're all wearing t-shirt designs. <laughs> and the latest one is this future surgeon one that you can find on Bonfire. I'll link that in the description down below in the YouTube video where you can purchase these shirts and all proceeds go to scholarships. Nothing is taken into pocket. This all goes to scholarships and recycled to give back to students who do apply to these scholarships. So thank you to Dr. Santos for those scholarships uh, that he has mentioned. So five so far and it's just, it's only growing from here on out. And speaking of which, just to add on to all of this talk about how genuine and caring and kind Dr. Santos is, he has also had now just told us recently about more amazing benefits for being on his team. Um, you did tell us that you are, I believe, giving us some webinars to help us out with our future careers. So again, there's so many benefits for being on, uh, on your team and I'm really thankful for that. Um, is there anything else that we're missing about it? So I just wanna make sure the audience knows there's so much, so I can't even <laughs> remember at this moment. But um, okay, so let's move on from that. What about, what about the, um, what am I missing, Yona? I, there's something I totally forgot. I wanted to talk about the books that you've created. Yes, okay, yeah. Go on. So right now we have two books. Um, my first one was 101 Ways to Flop in Podiatry School uh, for the first year student. Essentially, I wrote this thinking, what has been all the mistakes that I've done and all the mistakes that I've seen around my friends and compile it into a book? And it should have been about 200, but I narrowed it down to 101. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, it's supposed to be very laid back, relaxed. It's supposed to be a very casual book. And Actually, it was my first book to learn how to write a book. And I learned that there's a lot that goes on, a lot of legal stuff, a lot of financial burden, and a lot of national uh, IRS-related income. So a lot that a regular undergrad student didn't even think of. So all this, um, I actually don't make a lot of money off of it. It's only 17 cents for the book. I try to do it as cheap as possible but it's available on Amazon, which is the biggest platform that we have in the, in the world. And with that, uh, we are gonna push to do audiobooks the following year. Uh, audiobooks is the next big thing, uh, which is gonna be growing. And so right now that's the first book, 101 Ways to Flop in Podiatry. It's a great book for an undergrad who's about to start their first year. That's the, the main target audience. So they can read, okay, maybe I shouldn't do this. Oh yeah, this is silly, I should have done that. Uh, something silly as be early on time, 10, 15 minutes makes a difference, being the first one there and being the last one in charge. Um, 
dating even should I date my co uh, students, which is kind of funny, but there's all these questions that people tend to ask and nobody has the answer. So I compiled it all into 101 questions. The second book is uh, it's called Halix. Um, in general, it's the, it was, we were supposed to do um, a actual publication of the first year, meaning the first year Halix Magazine ever did, but I never come across from it. So I compiled all the articles that we did as a first year into our first book. So it is a historic book to show what we have done the very first year. And now every student has available uh, access to it. And that covers different general topics. Why should I join podiatry? What is so great about it? Uh, me as a, if, uh, as a male, what should I see and, and benefit? If you were a woman, what questions you might be asking? Is it worth uh, your time if, to raise a family kind of deal? And also, what do you kind of expect to see overall the stresses, the diversity, the issues, the solutions? And these are all from different students, not just from one. So it's all compiled the voice of the students to the a historic first book. The next two books that are coming up, it's going to be one dedicated for Women's Month. All every um, published article written by women is going to be in, compiled to one book. The second one is going to be uh, dedicated to residency life. So everything about residents and written by residents or fellows kind of deal. So I'm trying to cover all, all stages again, uh, all into different books. And like I mentioned, we're going to push for audiobooks because you can hear it in the background and still be learned from it wherever on the go. So that's our major thing that's going to come up in 2021. See, that's phenomenal because you're including everyone in this process. And I was actually going to ask then, in that case, does that mean anyone could participate for, um, for Halix Magazine? Like they could all send in articles whether or not they're part of Halix Magazine. Is that correct? Correct. Anybody, if you're a student, even if you're an undergrad and you have a question, we'll be happy to do kind of uh, talk to the chief or talk to the editor kind of deal. And especially we're pushing this year with residents. We're, um, we're actually in the works. It's kind of a secret works with an organization. So we are trying to do a scholarship for residents and hopefully get more residents to commit to writing to us. So that's going to be the next step kind of deal. Okay, I can't wait for that. I, I mean, we need all the help we can get. <laughs> yeah, and that was gonna be my follow-up question, but I think you answered it. Ed. And this is just the last question for the audience uh, and for this video. Uh, what are your, just your big future goals for Hox Magazine pre podiatry Life? What, what just name like top three future goals or top two? And also keep it generic because we, we don't want to give away your secrets. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the first one, which has been the goal since the beginning, uh, Halix Magazine is all online right now. And we do have an e-magazine, meaning electric copy magazine. But my first goal is to have it published and in print. Have a yearly print magazine sent to all nine schools slash 10 schools because we're going to have the next school in Texas. Um, so that way, if you're interviewing at these places, you happen to be in the waiting area you're gonna come across that magazine, which is done by us. The second one is to merge with a bigger corporation to help us financially and legally, but mostly so they can help support our ideas and spread it not only to students, residents, but even current podiatrists. So the second one is a merger, which we're still kind of in the works. I'm kind of excited. I actually spoke to them today. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long process, but if this actually works out, it might be one of the biggest mergers seen in podiatry in our lifetime because no, nothing like this has been done. And I don't think it's going to be pretty hard to compete with this, you know. So and finally, the third goal of mine is my goal is to have 10 scholarships, 10 scholarships. So every year I'm going to keep going, keep at it and just pushing. And that's the other major reason why to do a bigger merger to help us, uh, me give you money, but also I can get maybe a discount when I file my taxes, you know? <laughs> so it's little things like that. And it's the business side now that I'm a third year student that I'm realizing, okay, I lost a lot of money here. I'm not gonna do that same mistake. If anything is gonna help me and help more students.
So that's kind of where I'm at. That's that's great to hear. And, you know, I we're going to be by your side, along your side, helping you out, Dr. Santos, because we really do enjoy being a part of the team and seeing it grow from just when we were first years and seeing that more people are attracted to your channel, to your page. And I, I want to make it clear, I'm going to link everything, the, the shirts, the website, the Instagram, everything is going to be in the link in the description down below, guys, because uh you guys really need to jump on this opportunity. It's it's something that is really big and podiatry is only growing and this Alex Magazine Pre-Podiatry Life are leading the way, are basically at the forefront uh, charge of just teaching everybody about this field and it's only growing from here. And why wouldn't you wanna be part of a big, humongous family, a big community of other students helping one another just to make this field better in the eyes of so many people in the general public. So again, thank you so much, Dr. Santos, for coming on the channel today because we really do appreciate your time. I know you're really busy. You don't want to take too much time from you. But um, with that being said, we really enjoyed this meeting today and we are really grateful for that. No, thank you. And thank you for, you know, designing the shirts. <laughs> This is a friend's t-shirt. If you guys can't tell, it's it's one of my favorite ones. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna snag that one. I'm gonna snag that one because because this one I, I'm loving this one, but I need I need all the shirts for myself because once I go into residency or externships, I'm just gonna show them show it off to all the attendings and residents when I'm running around. Awesome. So again, thank you so much, Dr. Santos, for coming on to the channel today. Awesome. And thank you guys. I'm a big fan and Thank you for all you do, and hopefully you can continue this and inspire a bunch of students. So big fan of you. So. Okay. Anyways, take care, Dr. Santos. Appreciate right. your time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.